call the meeting to order. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda this evening? Yes. I'm not sure how to do this. I'm That's just right. told that I could do this tonight. We could probably um, put you, the next thing up after that would be public comment, so you can probably add it into the public comment. It's regarding the speed limit on a server. Yeah, that's fine. We do it out of that time. <laughs> the only thing I wanted to add, um, I don't know exactly which it would fall under. I'm going to say it's personnel slash legal um, executive order to talk about an incident that happened. Other than that. So you executive session? Yeah, yeah okay. at the end. At the end? Or? Yeah. Yeah, we'll put it at the end. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. All right. Now we'll open it up to public comment. So if there's anything that's not on the um, agenda for this evening, we can have that brought up now. So just make sure if you have any comment, just make sure you stand and, and, and uh, say your name so everybody knows we go for the record. So. Oh, we're on. Yeah, yep, it's for your time. <laughs> no, I'm not like this. Um, my husband and I recently purchased your name? Um, your as a friend of Perkins. Sorry. Um, Noah Woods Old Estate on Woodland Road. And um, recently my dog was hit by a car. And we own both sides of the road. We have our barns over here and a home over here. Um, people drive significantly fast on that road. It hooks up with a four-class road. So we're constantly getting traffic, going quite fast. Um, the person who hit the dog was going quite fast. Um, so I called the town and asked them what the speed limit was, and they told me 50. I have pictures of the road in my home and where my grandchildren play to where the road is. It's not that wide. It's not wide enough for 50. We go, Sand Hill goes 25, so we're right off Sand Hill. So it should be 25. It's out of ordinance is why it's 50. I've it's spoken to a couple other people on the road and they were fine with it. Okay, people what do we have, do you, do you know what the, if it's not in the book, that stretch of road for speed? Yeah, not every road in that ordinance is listed. Yeah. It and, not listed. Huh? It's, it apparently doesn't come on the Right, it's not. So it defaults so back to the state speed limit, which would be 50. Right. Yeah. So what we can do is we're I'm working with Two Rivers, the local planning commission, to do speed studies on some of the roads in town. Uh, because when you go to change the speed limit, the state requires that you have data to support your, your reasoning for changing speed limits. So we could uh, put your tip, well, it's just the way it is, but uh, we could put your road on that list and I can get some speed studies a little little gauge things. Um, as soon as I can get them out here, whenever they have it available, I guess. Um, I can't just automatically change the speed limit. I don't have the authority to do that. So, and the town doesn't either. They can set the speed limits by ordinance, but they typically have to have data to support it. So, um, I mean, we can look at the ordinance and look at adding that. It sounds like that road has to be added in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, that might be the most, the, the, the best way to do it, the quickest way to do it, because it sounds like time is of the essence to you. It is to you. Yeah. Yeah. What kind of uh, data? Speed data. Uh, part of what you do, part of the engineering behind putting together a, the proper speed is not necessarily what everybody wants it to be. It's what traffic can safely, that part of it anyway, is what traffic can safely go at. Right. Right, but that's just a, but that's just a, an element to that. It's not just hey, everybody wants it to be twenty. Right. They they want to see some data. They want to see the type of the road, the width of the road. All those different elements all come together to what is considered a safe speed limit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but it sounds as though it it needs to go down for right. sure. Yeah. It's just it's just defaulting to that speed limit because it's not one of the listed roads. Right. We get a lot of speeders with the folders. We get motorcycles. We get. You know, it gets to be significantly a lot of traffic. Right, right. Going too fast. Right. Even 35 is too fast. But I guess I'm not the one to say that. 
So I think, depending on what the board wants, we can look at um, changing a speed limit is, is an ordinance change because the speed is set by ordinance. Um, that's, that's something that we could definitely look at. Uh, I then see if, uh, I'll have to see if there's, if we can do like an interim speed limit until we get data, that's possible. Well, it uh, start out with 25, so it doesn't get so weird. It doesn't Sure, sure, no, I, I, I get you. And it's just because I think it just, it, it's just by default. It's not that it's, there was never any real sense to it, it's just because it's not listed. By default, that's what it is. Which is wrong, yeah. But when you start at the key, at the key, the state. Sure. We've got the home, we've got the barn, we've got the home, we've got the work, and some people just want to find sense, they just don't. Sure, so what, what I have to do is we have to change the ordinance. And the problem with an ordinance change is that, well, it just gets a little bit more time consuming, but it's something that can be done. Um, in this case, it sounds as though it needs to be added to the ordinance, because it wasn't. Um, but so it, it has to have the, the research done to the state to qualify for what the state says we can pull it down to, or otherwise it's not enforceable. Right. right. That's where the traffic data comes into play. Right. Yeah. Because, again, part of it is, is well, it, it, it's a big stuff, I and mean, it's a mess. I know you're looking at like, what the heck? No sense. I know. It just makes no sense to me, but it's, it's, it's big. Part of it's because the state gives us funding for these roads to maintain these roads. It's class three and two and one roads. Okay. They give us money for that, so okay. they want to have a little bit of their hand in the in the whole process of how things happen. And part of the the changing of a roadway speed limit, even though it's by ordinance, local ordinance, most likely will require some. Uh, some data. Now, if it doesn't, and I can find a way to make it work without it, we can do that and just move forward with the ordinance. I mean, unfortunately, there's, you know, just like everything nowadays, is so much red tape on doing anything. And I mean, it would be nice. Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, it, I mean, we could go out there tonight and put a sign that says 35, let's say. But if someone drives by that and goes 55, we can't enforce that speed limit at 35. Yeah. So. The state has actually made recommendations, and you're going to hate to hear this. The state has made recommendations in the past to not post speed limits on these kind of on the roads out, rural roads, to not post speed limits. Why? Because people will, this is their words, not mine, people will inherently drive the speed limit that is safe for them to drive. Yeah. Tom Bell. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, what road is it? What's the road? Okay. It's Woodland Road. Woodland Road, okay. Right. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, we took our grandchildren to play there. So if you looked at the road, you, you would see how much sense I'm making. Right. But I, I guess I understand. I didn't understand. I thought I could just come in here, grab the sign, leave. Like, yeah, hey, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> um, I did put up a sign. Years ago, that used to be I put up a sold children. That place on. Yep, mm -hmm. that's fine. Okay. Just. I will put up ten of them. If they get smashed by a, a snow plow, we can't do anything. About and it. I will probably have to remove it in the winter. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of figured that I'm, as much. Yeah. Well, I'll work on it. See what I can do. Unfortunately, you're just kind of there is bureaucracy, and that's just the way things are. Unfortunately. Uh, so if, especially with speed limits and safety concerns and things like that, there's all these different layers that you have to go through to get. Okay. To get so there. if I get a no here, that's it. What's that? So if I get, like, if I come back and you guys get back to me and you guys are just going to tell me no, and then I just walk away and say, you. I mean, you're uh, no, there's, always, there's always other, I mean, you have state representatives you can talk to if okay. you're not happy with your local okay. government. There's other higher ranking officials that you can talk to okay. outside of the town. Okay. Uh, I don't think the answer is going to be no. I think we're going to logically find out yeah, what yeah. the speed limit needs to be. Okay. Uh, again, I think what you're seeing is the speed limit just because it's by default. By default, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. we'll, I'll work on it and see what I can do. Okay, perfect. That, I mean, I guess that's all I can ask for right yeah. now. And again, there is a little time, some bureaucracy we have to do, but at the end of the day, we'll, we'll work on it and do it as quickly as I can. Because I know I can hear your voices. It's important. You Very would important. get back to me? Um, or you could come I get and talk back with to me. You? Either way, you can always come talk to me if nothing, if you're not seeing anything. Who or you want to. I'm the town manager. Oh, okay. So, see, um, I'm new here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. And your name? Greg. Greg. Greg Maggard, yes. Okay. Um, All right. But if you have any questions or you you know you don't see any action, just email me or come in. I can give you an update on what we're at. Okay, because if another dog or a child gets, then we're just too, I mean, honestly, we're just too late. I agree. But I have to do the process that I have to do. 
I know. I'm bound by that process. Okay. And so is everybody else. I get it. So I get I'll work on it. Okay. Okay. All right. I can leave now. Be done. If uh, you're finished, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> Sorry, you guys have anything else? I don't mean to take over. That's no, that's Thank fine. Maybe, maybe we can just ask Two Rivers that being being what's happened on that. No, that's okay. But I'll, I'll yeah, they said they had like six of those speed things. And no, but maybe being that there was a, an incident there already, mm -hmm. that maybe they can make it a priority to come in sure. soon. I'll, I'll so. get with Two Rivers. They have the speed sensor things. Right. That'll be part of our data collection. We have two different postmen, and the one postman is he does he's excellent, and there was another like off duty one or substitute one. And I had to go stand in the middle of the road and ask him not to drive that fast. So you got the name of the road of Woodland? I do have Woodland. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Anything else? Public comment, inquiry, anything that's not on the agenda for this evening? All right. Seeing none, we will move on to our first appointment. So Cecil. Not here. Washburn, not here. So we will, uh, let's see. Must be Charles. Yep, that's us. So you guys are all here. So what we'll do is we'll um, we'll skip ahead to the 631. You guys are good with that? That's fine. And then uh, if Cecil shows up, we'll fit him in. So. Hi. You're on. Charles Stewart, my wife, John. Greg and I have talked about our road. We live at 157 Dark Hill. We bought the property in 1972. And I was told at that time by John Colliano and Carol Slack that it was a town road. And for a year and a half, the town maintained it. Everything was fine. We had the camp road washed out on 73. Uh, Jim Gratton, well, Carol started going up at that time, it was Slag Hill, not Dark Hill. Started backfilling all the roads. <clears throat> Got to our road, our driveway. Carol finished, he said, I got a problem. He said, Jim Bratton, who I guess had been a town manager at one time, said, it's not a town road. So, uh, okay, so there we were, it was taken. Bert Moffat said, to the best of our knowledge, the road known as Cure Road is not a town road. There are not no records to indicate it is or was a town road. And yet, Carol and John and other people have said that. I'm not a lawyer, but my daughter is. And part of the reason that this thing, for years we've taken care of the road, we've done it, we've not had a problem. I'm 79, I've got stage four melanoma cancer. I'm getting ready to turn things over to the children. My daughter's an attorney. They were up here, she looked at this, she said, Dad, you know, she said, to the best of their knowledge, they don't have any records uh, that indicate it is a town road or it wasn't a town road. She said, you should have fought it. Well, you know, we lived in New Jersey, we came back and forth, we loved it, as I said, we've been here since 72. Our children all came up in the summers, went to 4-H camp and everything else. And we've taken care of it. We've done a good job. But then, suddenly, we have another driveway up oh. there, coming off of the, our driveway, where Greg says it's not really our driveway, it's down four or whatever. And but these people pay nothing. I've paid to have a cloud and just had uh, the road done in a, in resurfaced, taken care of, and yet these people, they've got a couple cars, trucks, and everything that they don't see from their house. But as we come up our driveway, we do. They got the junk car there. They've got a propane tank right next to the driveway. And it's beautiful. It's out of their way, but it's all on us. And uh, it's just ridiculous. So I didn't want to 
Well, I will interrupt you, but don't mean to. I just want to make sure I get the information right. So there's another driveway that is off of your driveway yes. that is another residence, or that's no. town? That's another residence. Uh, another yes. residence, okay. Uh, there's two driveways. Okay. One is Daryl Porcelli. So is this um, uh, is this a class four road or what? class three? Alan and I have already met out there. We've got a plan to do this. It's going to require uh, restabilization with riprap to create a shoulder. Once the shoulder's completed, we'll extend it all out. We're going to extend the culvert out about another 15 to 20 feet, uh, so the outfall is down the hill where it belongs, and it gives us extra room to replace the shoulder. And then we're talking about possibly a guardrail in the same location. So it's currently it's classified as class three. It's a class three road. It's Dart Hill, isn't it? It's Dart Hill, yeah. It's right at the end of there, so as their driveway comes, or their road comes down, it's across the street, mm -hmm. right there. And we have drainage that comes from up the hill and across the culvert, and then it goes through another culvert that discharges on the other side of the road. That's too short, so it's eroding that bank. And then the water comes down on the other side, and it turns right there, and it erodes, it just exacerbates the whole issue. The culvert's too short. We've talked about extending the culvert, coming in with riprap to, to create a new uh, structural, structurally sound base, and then putting dirt on top of that to increase the entire edge of the road all the way out. It's on a, on, it's on a, a schedule to be done whenever we can get to it. It'll be done this summer, we don't hope, because we know it's a big issue right through there. And the, and the reason why I ask if it's class three or four is there's a big difference between the two classifications of roads in Vermont. So a class four road, we don't do any maintenance to the road. So there's no winter plowing. Uh, there's no adding gravel or grading. Uh, there's no doing ditching or uh, sometimes there's some put culvert work, but usually not. Um, where class three, we, we do, you know, some plowing and grading and things well, this, like that. This is not, you know, again, it is, that's three. And, you know, we're concerned about our driveway coming down, but Dart Hill has so much traffic. Mm -hmm. we, we moved up here in 72. My wife could ride her all the way around the village never have a problem, but this other woman who talked about flying up Bar Hill, I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. It is what it is. They, to me, 
they're destroying their vehicles. I mean, it, that is not a very good road. So many of you who have been up there know what it's like. Uh, I wouldn't want to drive as fast as they do, and yet they do. So, so it, well, sounds, it sounds like as far as the road goes, the, the town's portion of the road, that, that will be all taken care of and brought up to the class three specifications. So it's correct. on it. It's, it, yeah, yeah. it's, it's on it. There's not a defined schedule, but it's, we've talked about it. You and I have talked about it. Alan and I have gone out and looked at it and we've got a game plan. It's just a matter of getting it. It's real similar to what we did out on uh, Finley Bridge. We lost the shoulder. So we came in with some larger rock and that large rock locks together and allows us to kind of create a base. And then we put dirt on top of it to extend the shoulder out. Good. Same concept. Uh, yeah. Four corners is great. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, that was a big project. So it sounds like we will be getting to it. Um, yeah. And and if for some reason, do we have a timetable like before winter? Or it will we, be before winter. It has to be before winter. Okay. Yeah. So maybe if you don't see anything by October, late October, then give us a holler yeah. on that. Um, as far as the, you had a couple, a couple of comments there in regards to some property that was at the bottom of your driveways. Right. I mean, that's not the town. There's nothing that we can do for you on that. That would be up to you and... But how did, so how did you let them put a driveway on our road? I don't... Did, did, it, I it, 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 it has it both ways. It's either one The way town way wouldn't have granted access to that. It's a class four road, so it's a public road. Um, at the time that the driveways went in, there were no permits. We require a driveway permit now, an access permit, so that we can control a little bit site visibility and safety and things like that. Then take care of the road. I mean, what? you can have it both ways. You're either going to, you know, what this if, is like okay, the middle of finish. the road, if, you know. But we, but we would not require a permit on that road because it's a class four road. By state statute, the town is not required to maintain a class four road. No, because I know typically that, they're typically they're not as nice. Huh? We're going for a class three for that road. Right. right. But I'm just saying right now the way it's designated right now. Right. The the accesses that were granted or the accesses that are off of that road, I'm guessing were old enough that they probably were never permitted. There may not even have been a permit back then. I don't know. How long ago did they go in? Haven't I don't know. Well again, you know, I had But they you know they don't take Randall, care of anything. Randall they don't Walsh do anything. Permit, it's a uh, freebie. What's that? It's a freebie for them. Okay. Yeah, I, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. But it goes back a long time. As yeah. Well. Randall Washburn had, had uh, something at one time we had gotten a lawyer involved um, to look at it and said, you know, for all his lifetime, that road was always maintained by the town. But again, there's no records. Right. So what we're asking to do is take a look again. You know, there are, there's two active driveways on it one that isn't. Um, and again, my daughter said, look, you know, we've got over 100 acres. My daughter said, you know, she understands three roads would mean that the town would then take over responsibility. She said, sell some of the property. We don't want to sell the property. We've enjoyed it. We want them to maintain it and take care of it the same way. Right. So that's, that's our story. So as far as the town's portion of it, that will be scheduled to be done between now and winter time. Good. It, it yeah. sounds like, unfortunately, I mean, it's probably not what you want to hear, but the items that are on the other two driveways, or the other drive that you're talking about, are, won't be anything that we'll be able to enforce here. No, um, but what about going from a four to a three? I, I think it's, it's, again, it's going to, I believe, We'll look into it, but I believe it'll all come under the grandfather clause. It, it was there prior, prior to. Um, Maybe a class three road, you'd have to upgrade a class four to state specifications for a class three, right? So statute says um, the minimum standards for a class three highway are a highway negotiable under normal conditions all seasons of the year by a standard manufactured pleasure car. This would include, but not be limited to sufficient base I'm sorry, sufficient surface and base, adequate drainage, and sufficient width capable to provide winter maintenance, except that based on safety considerations for the traveling public, the municipal employee is to select board by rule, adopt, blah, blah, blah. After following the process, providing notice, uh, have the authority to de determine whether a class three highway or section of a highway should be plowed and made negotiable during the winter. So they give you sort of a set of standards, nothing. Um, nothing quantified, 
you know, 50 foot wide, this much base kind of thing. But it gives you sort of some standards. And then it also gives the board the um, authority to determine if they decide they do not want to have it plowed in the wintertime based on, you know, if, if the safety issue for the plow drivers or if there's no turnaround or whatever, that the board can, does have the authority to not plow the road. Um, but as far as the, the, um, the standard, which standard to me means the, the physical requirements of the, the roadway itself, it's a little vague as to what that means. It just says, like I said, it, something that a, a normal standard manufactured pleasure car can, can negotiate has pro, um, adequate surface and base, adequate drainage, and sufficient width capable to provide winter maintenance. That's really about all these things. You get a little less traffic on your roadway, I bet. We do, but I just paid a lot of money to have it done. And we, mm -hmm. we've maintained it since 72. We've taken care of it and done it, but it's now coming back that, you know, again, uh, the kids are saying, Dad, you blew it. You should have been after them and pursued this. You bought it as a town road. It was maintained that way, and there are no official things, you know, to the best of their knowledge. It's not a town road. Well, that's because there are no records. So, who's to say it is or was not a town road? It was promised to us and sold to us that way. And unfortunately for John, he passed away. Mm -hmm. um, so, I don't have him here. Carol's not here anymore either. So. Yeah, so it, it is currently classified as a class four. So, it, it is a town road, it's just a class four road. So that's a little a little bit confusing because it's I don't know if back then they say it wasn't a road at all, yeah. or was it not a so it was a private driveway. That's a, that's where it's a little confusing. I don't know because they're saying it wasn't a road, but we have it as a class four road. And I don't know when that ever if that ever changed or. Yeah, not a not a town road. Yeah, that's other stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Is it is it listed under a town map? It is listed as a class four road. Cure road. Is that what we're talking about? Uh, yeah, their their driveway or that road. It is shown as a class four road. Okay. I don't necessarily know if it has that name. It might still have the same name, but I'm not sure. But it's shown as a class four road. So then the question is whether or not we can look at going to a class three road. Right. And then what would take, what would be involved in doing that? Um, let me look and see what statute says. Well, for example, is there a place for the plot to turn around? Yes. Yeah, they, just they, one. Yeah. they came, they did it for years. Carol never, Carol never had a problem. I don't know if they are. Turning around. The trucks are different. Place for them to turn. Uh, reclassification class. Class one. Class four to class three. Here we go. Um, there is no statutory requirement that such. Okay, it says. Upgrading is a common issue faced by the governing body as landowners often now locate homes in remote locations. There is no statutory requirement that such requests be granted by the governing body. However, there may be an issue with constitutional equal protection if the municipality can be shown to be disparate in the treatment of similar highways. So are there a bunch of similar highways that have the same identical conditions that we are considering class threes? Um, the governing body may grant the request, but order that the petitioner bear the cost of the upgrade. And you are the government. Um, that's all it really says. So without getting into statute, which I don't have internet, I can't look at the actual state statute. Um, it reads as though the, the governing body has the right to reclassify that road. Yeah. Um, upgrading it to whatever the condition is that would classify it as a, uh, make the town couple as a class three road that it meets certain conditions or certain 
it's upgraded to whatever condition it is so that we're comfortable taking it over for maintenance. Yes. Any thoughts, Mo? We've taken over the driveway from class four roads before in years past, but they have to be upgraded considerably. I think the only real the only real um, concern you would have, I would think, would just be the width. It's a little narrow through there. I don't know if we could widen it out, but I've been up there and it's it's a good looking road. It is. It's got adequate drainage. It's got adequate drainage. I mean, I haven't detailed it, but I've driven up it. Um, and the only thing that really jumped out at me was just the width of the road. It wasn't. It wasn't 30 foot wide, 25 foot wide, whatever. Uh, we, I no. At this time, it was just when I went up and met with you guys. I think it was in the fall. It was a lot of that. And even then, the condition was fine. That wasn't really the issue. It was I just the only thing I saw that jumped out, like I said, was just the width of the road. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. Right. To make it. Did you? Yeah. Yeah. The truck's a lot bigger than one of them, Carol. Yeah, but yeah, you know, and again, I, I think the, you know, as far as the width and all that too, there's only really one, there are three driveways on it, but there's really only one house that's directly off of it. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think you're gonna run into a lot of people that you have to try to pass, being that it's a narrow road. But, but that is the one thing I think that's, that was a little worrisome when I first went up there. Uh, it wasn't the base or anything, and the drainage, it was more the width of the road. Yeah. And this was, I think this was in the fall. I remember there being ditches on both sides. Yeah, it, it actually yeah. slopes across the road and down the hill. It slopes in the ditch that comes all the way up from the top yeah. at, at the bend and all the way down. And then it's a, a pretty a hill off the other side, right. isn't it? We've, we've survived two and a half hundred year floods up there. And the only problem has been dark hill or slack hill at the time. Yeah. Our so, thing. I mean. If we got into this a little further, I would definitely do a more detailed analysis of it and make sure that it's, you know, that it's a good road. But, um, you know, just the one thing so far that I could, that was kind of blatantly an issue. Yeah. I mean, I think I'm open to the idea. Um, I think the only thing being on the board, well, I think the longest now, <laughs> is, is that we've kind of set the precedence in the other direction over the last few years with, We've actually taken some roads that were class threes that only were servicing one person, let's say, or two people, and we put them down to class fours. So I just, you know, would caution us when we're looking at it, you know, if, you know, you'd be changing your, the precedence back that, you know, you could have others that would want their roads back to class threes that we had put to class fours. Um, you know, we're also looking at some of our budgeting type areas where we've been looking to shore up budget. So. Class threes obviously cost the town more money than class fours do. So, but I don't think there's any anything wrong with doing a study and, and seeing what the road's at currently, what it might take to put it to that, and, and then we once we have better information, we be able to make a, I understand a judgment. Also that by going to a, a three, the town is able to get additional money from the state. Well, it, unfortunately, the way it works in Vermont is. You, you would get money. So you'd go from class fours, you get no money. So you would get money, right? But it, and realistically, it's, it's like this. The, the state will give you $330 to maintain that road for the year and it'll cost the town five grand. You know, I mean, that, that's the way that works. It, you never made whole on class three roads in, in the state of Vermont. But again, I don't think there's any, you know, you know maybe if, if, we're, if the road is in pristine condition where we don't have to do any work to it, and could take it over. That might not be, that might be worth looking into, you know, so, um, so if, if, you know, I, I guess, I mean, it's up to us as a board to decide what we want to do. Um, if we want to have Greg 
go in and look at it and figure out what the cost of taking the road over might be. Um, How long is it? Is it about a quarter mile? <laughs> Roughly, I don't remember. Yeah. How far up down the hill is it before the return? The so it's yeah. just above the. Uh, you yeah. come up the right hill. Where the wash out. analysis of what what it looks like and what it needs if it needs anything yeah. and we'll do some measuring and, and come back with you with what it looks like mm -hmm. what we think as far as I think the only thing that we don't have settled is as far as the other access points of, of your neighbors I, I don't know where that falls I, I would assume because it was done at a earlier time that there's really nothing that the town can do of that at this point I mean, obviously, if it was today and they wanted to take care of it, I wouldn't have a problem. Right, right now, I'm paying for it to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Who's got curb cuts? Late 80s, 90s? Nope. I built the house in 79, and they started just before I built my house. So they were mid 70s. Hmm. So we can do a little research and see if there's anything on the record that gives them an authority. But if it happened before that, I don't know if we would have any. You know, we can't go back and say, hey, you need to do a curb cut permit. Because it was in here, it's been in for 40 years. But um, you have any idea when those when those things showed up? Do you remember? Not really. Not really. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the lawyer from Jersey. She somehow or other she looked, I guess, at, at things in the town, and she said she wasn't able to find anything where no. they were given approval by the town right. to do that. And back then, a lot of things weren't given approval. Things just happened. Well, it, it's just like the fact, you know. That, from Burke, you know, going back a long time, people say, well, it was a town road, it wasn't a town road. Yeah. Uh, right. But they plowed it. <laughs> yeah, for a year and a half. Years. Uh, it yeah. was taken care of. So it was nothing that, you know, we bought and they said, oh, no, it's not a town road. You know, they did. Right. Well, at some point in the history of the world, it was designated as a class four town road. And I don't know when that happened, but that's what it currently is. It's a class four town road. So we'll, uh, it sounds as though they want me to kind of go up with Alan and we'll do some engineering and look around and, and see what we come back with. You know where the house is a little way at the top. Right, I know where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate your help. I guess, did Cecil say anything that he wasn't coming tonight? No, or? I haven't heard anything. Okay. We'll just, you know, we'll keep going and he shows, he shows. We have, uh, is the, all the rec committee members here that um, are coming, or should we wait a little bit? Or? Well, could you, could you just, um, just a little bit? Yeah, I'm no problem. Sure. We have another five or ten minutes where sure. you guys come up anyway, sure. so. I'm not sure who's coming. But. Okay. Well, we'll uh, move forward sure. with the policy and procedure for grant management. Greg wants to take us. So this was, uh, this yeah. came from a request that we had from the board, actually. Um, and so Therese put this together. This is a, uh, a policy for uh, standardizing how grants are, are administered and, and written and handled in town. Mm -hmm. um, we've had a little bit of issue where there were grants uh, that were being put together and applied for with the, with the town being the, the primary beneficiary without the town really knowing what was going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is just a policy to, to, try, to, to, to try to remedy that issue and get um, everybody on the same page as far as what the expectations and what the process looks like for grants for uh, for all these these uh, special committees that we have. Uh, we don't want to deter them from doing it. We think it's great what they're doing, but we need to have the, the town and myself and, and Therese especially um, a little more involved in, in what's happening so that we don't have any redundancy or, or we're just aware of what's going on. There's a lot of times there are uh, 
financial matches that we have to worry about too. So we want to make sure that we're budgeting appropriately for these these potential grants. That's what this is about. No, I, I read through it. I thought it was good. Um, I mean, we had been getting into the um, a little bit of a habit here in the last year of um, uh, committees or individuals kind of skipping some steps, and you know the the original formal process is to come before the board with the idea of the project, um, get get an, an approval from the board to go forward with the project, and then to reach out to the town administrators to help write and manage the right. the grants. And that, that should be the process, and I think it's all laid out here. It looks yeah. good, I thought. Especially the, the reimbursements and the funding and the handling of the dollars as they come <coughs> Everybody will get one if it's approved. Okay. Yes. And just kind of making sure, just like the, you know, select board, the committees have different um, turnover, you know, yeah. uh, just making sure everybody kind of knows what the formal process is because, right. you know, it, 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 you know, it'd be a little disappointing if you, let's say, had an idea from a committee and you guys started doing something and you got to almost the end and to find out that, you know, the select board didn't approve it and, you know, the idea might not go anywhere. Um, or you lose the grant timing or something. So and, and I understand completely. Um, I just um, will um, give you an example of some really quirky things. Um, in uh, the spring of 2015 or 2000, 2015, I heard about the Marco Foundation grant, and um, I called Abby and asked if we could do it. And um, she said, no, you have to go before the select board. And I was on a time crunch. Um, and so I called Carl Russell, and he said, no, you can't do it. And so I called the person in charge of that grant and said, no, we can't do it. And then a month later, um, one select board person came to me and said, congratulations, you got the Marco Foundation grant. Yeah. Well, there is, a, yeah. in this policy and yeah. procedures that we have here, it does, right. it does give the, the town manager the, um, the power to grant uh, approvals of, without so, going before so the select I'm board. So I'm just saying that sometimes yep. people give us money that we didn't mm -hmm. even apply for, and that was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah, well, with this policy and with the, the, the people that are in place, we'll get a better handle on all the grants and make sure that the money's going to the... That's really the, the idea here, is just to make sure that, that the money's there when you need a match and that when you get the money, it goes to where it's supposed to go. That's what it's about. Or if there's a town match that, that has been... It's been budgeted. Yeah, so. Right. so I um, I would entertain a motion to accept the policy and procedures grant management... Um, policy uh, form here that Greg has laid out. All in favor? Aye. Okay, ayes have it. That's the one you want signed? Yeah. Okay. So we will turn it at uh, 6.45, so the, we had asked for the rec committee to come in and just kind of, I guess in, in the board's eyes, we just kind of wanted to make sure that we're all on the same page. Um, okay. And then also just kind of see where you guys are at in the process of everything. Okay. Um, not just, well, I mean, we were talking about the skate park, but also about the whole master plan right. that the voters had voted on right. uh, a few years ago on kind of Right. So I had Greg um, bring the the plan that you guys are working on, or the footprint of the facility. Right. Um, and maybe we can talk about um, <laughs> maybe we can talk about um, maybe first if it makes sense. Maybe we can just talk about the overall footprint, kind of what 
where we're at with the foot one direction, what, you know, maybe what's going before what uh, type thing, okay. and then we can talk more um, specifically about the skate park, um, where we're at in that process. Okay. So if you guys are good with that. Uh, so maybe just an overview of where we're at based on what the voters had weighed in on, um, what was it, 2015? Um, before that, I think. Before that. Yeah. <coughs> it went to town meeting, I think, in 2014. Yeah. Yeah, okay, 14, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was approved. So if anybody and that... It was approved, there were three plans. Yep. And then, and then I, and then, uh, and then, and it's in town reports here. I have different town reports. Yep. So then... Um, and then the select board um, allocated um, um, uh, I forget which um, the, the, I forget which year that the, the um, okay uh, the last plan Okay, so this is in the town report of June 30th, 2014. The Bethel Recreation Committee had a busy and productive year in 2014. The committee recreation staff and two officials continued work toward mark, making the master plan for the recreation facility a reality. At the beginning of the year, the select board recommended the plan C of the three miles developed by the Vermont Integrate Architect to be used as the model concept. So that that's the model that we have here. Right. And then at that time, the town started to appropriate money into the, uh, what we call the Recreation Committee Fund, um, if I remember yeah. right. Um, um, the timeline on that, was my notes. Oh, that might have been 15 when we started okay. that. Okay. Um, Okay, so, so um, all right. Okay. Um, okay, here we go. March 1st, 2011, the um, voters approved a creation of a fund for purpose of constructing and maintaining improvements to the town recreation facility. That was in March of 2011. Mm -hmm. In August of 2011, the committee met with the select board at the Recreation Center. And as of the August 16th Recreation Committee minutes, Steve Durkee was to be contacted regarding creating, creating the master plan for the recreation facility. Um, Steve Durkee came in June of 2012 and, this, and the committee did in July of 2012, we took an ADA training so that we could make sure that we were handicapped compliance with any plan that we were gonna come up with. The select board in August of 2012 said put the bid out, put it out to bid in order, he, they didn't want to stick with Steve Durkee they asked us to put out a bid. Uh, they asked us, we did a community survey in August of 2012. And so in the fall of 2012, um, the committee in the town picked the Vermont Integrate Architect. In March of 5, 2013, the voters approved $5,000 to go uh, for the recreation facility improvements. Um, in March 4th, 2014, the town approved $12,000 for the recreation facility improvements. In 2015, there was no vote or no approval, but looking at the town report, I don't know why it's in the budget, but there, it's in the town report that it was budgeted 15000 in that fund. So in the fall of 2015, the
the pool house construction was put out to bid. Um, and then, um, and then that what that they settled on a bid. They started construction in the fall of 2015. Um, and then, so then, then the committee started thinking about the skateboard park. Um, in February 10th, com committee, February 10th, 2016, committee minutes, it says that Deidre, a uh, very nice Deidre Finney, will be spokesperson to ask for $30,000 for the fund, and the committee will get support from kids that, that are asking for a skateboard park. Um, and, um, and then March 1st, 2016, voters approved 20,000 to be added to the 10,000 because I thought that we went before the board in, in the fall of 2015 and wanted to ask for 30,000. And my recollection was that Bill Hall said, well, we could put in 10,000, but you have to ask the voters for the extra 20,000. Yeah. So that's what we did. And then March 7, 2017, um, um, we, um, wanted to, we wanted 40,000, and so we put in regular budget of 10 and, and asked the voters to increase it to 40,000. And then, um, um, so that is the timeline on doing the money for the skateboard park. Okay, thank you. Um, I know some questions that have been, <clears throat> uh, before we get to the skateboard park, um, with the model itself is, yeah. um, I guess some of the questions I've been fielding anyways, now that, okay. well, I think a combination of the pool house has been done, right. and I, I won't say we're spinning our wheels because things take time to, right. to do things, but there's yeah. been a period of time where we have funds, but nothing is being built, I guess we'll call it. And we've been spending a lot of time with the skateboard part um, well, designing, redesigning, looking for money, um, these different things. Um, but I guess some of the comments that I've been fielding right now has been, um, you know, like um, we talked about like a skating place over there. Um, you know, could that be uh, um, that on the plan that was set for ice skating in the wintertime, could that also be like a, a basketball court so that you can play basketball in the summer and skate in the winter? It'd be probably pretty, well, out of all the projects we have, probably pretty inexpensive and one you could just kind of roll out there. Right. Um, there's been also talk in the community about the tennis courts and when, when might right. one or two or whatever come, um, and then anything else with the green space over there. Because um, right. all, all they're hearing right now is just about a skate park. Um, and, you know, there's, we're just still in this design stage of, of it. So I didn't know where the committee was at in regards to, I've been fielding questions, granted, you know, they don't go to the committees and they don't, you know, go to hear all that, but, you know, where are we at with some of the other projects, I'll call them like maybe the lower hanging fruit that might be able to get taken care of quicker? Um, well, um, you know, well, I, I understand um, because it's, it's even been frustrating for us because basically I forget what year that um, um, we, we went to the board with um, designs from a Michael Parker, a Vermonter who has done skateboard parks in um, Newport and Lebanon, New Hampshire, Newport, Vermont and Lebanon, New Hampshire, and the board Asked, and the reason why we did that is we wanted to go for the Tom, Tommy Hawk. Mm -hmm. Tony. Tony Hawk grant. And so, um, so <clears throat> the, uh, the board asked us to, to tweak stuff and we were doing that. And then, and then all of a sudden, um, um, Corey Stearns, who has been the lead person on this, mm -hmm. um, had, um, information from 
Fawn Ranch in California, somebody that would do a better job. Um, so he went before the select board and asked that permission for that designer um, to come and do a workshop. And that workshop was in October 2017, October 11, 2017. And he got permission because the designer, in order to come, would have to, we'd have to pay $5,000 for him just to come and do the workshop. Mm -hmm. So the select board gave Corey and the committee permission to come have that designer from California come do the workshop. And um, that's what we have been working with. And the frustration has been that the, the um, design that the, uh, the design for um, the um, skateboard park that was given to us in December 2017. Um, I have pictures of it somewhere. Um, um, I can't remember. Oh, here it is. Can you take them off? These are the designs that we were given by the designer in December because he came and did the workshop, got our input in October 2017. And so he submitted those designs to us in December of 2017. Now we had people by that time, because of the workshop, we had more people get involved um, we had, with, then with the committee, people that like skateboarding, people that had expertise on, on it, and, um, and kids that wanted their input to, to the design. And uh, so we came up with people being up, uh, not liking the fact that the wall, that wall that, uh, that Vince um, um, constructed in his design, um, we felt that that wasn't very, you, you can speak more to that. Yeah, this, this wall right here that Ellie's talking about right here, because of the placement of where the skate park was put in the initial design, uh, Vince from Spawn Ranch felt that this wall was necessary in order for elevation purposes in order to support that hill um, and support the skate park. Uh, I don't know the, all the, and I'm not an engineer, so I don't understand all of that, but, but when we met with Vince, um, a lot of us were very frustrated that a lot of our hard earned money was going to be spent on this retaining wall per se that he felt the kids could skate but in talking with people who are skaters and the young people that came and were helping us that was not the design that uh, at that meeting in October that a lot of people had expressed interest in elements of the skate park that the kids would really enjoy from all ages. I mean, that was the one thing that I had stressed and we had stressed over and over and over again, that we want this to be a skate park that three-year-olds can toddle onto and have fun with, but people who are more skilled like Shane and, and my son and other people who have skated a long time could also enjoy. And so, at that meeting, there was a lot of discussion with Vince about, well, we don't like this wall. And Vince felt convinced that we needed the wall, correct? He's, he's still of the mind that we need the wall if we keep the skate park at the location that it's, it's intended to be. Right. Um, I, I think that's, it's not that big a deal. We can, we can adapt the terrain. We can put a ledge there instead of a, instead of a lot of transition and a lot of concrete. Um, we have a lot of flexibility in some of these areas. Our, our biggest 
concerned with uh, a, a West Coast guy designing an East Coast skate park is he doesn't necessarily represent the interests of the locals. We've got four local skaters and I'm a lifetime BMXer and we can come up with a pretty good idea of the layout, convey it to this guy who really understands all the subtleties of skate park design and then he can whip up a nice package that's clean and tight and we can execute. Um, Within a I, budget, I, I would, that's reasonable. Yeah, I was about to say, the, the biggest ticket that we need to, to lock in on is the budget. Uh, we're looking at a matching funds grant, potentially, and we'll, we'll fill, submit all the town paperwork for this new process that was just proposed. Um, budget is the biggest driver here. Um, it affects the square footage, it affects the type of terrain and features we can integrate. Um, so the extent to which we can start honing in on that information, that's when it's mature to, to commit to a footprint and, there, and then the terrain and then all the line items that go with any park of any size. But right. until that point, it's all just, you know, grasping at straws. I think, I think the largest concern that I've heard um, and I wasn't really honestly paying attention to the process, maybe as close as I should be. Um, I guess what, what has been pointed out to me by some others is that, um, <clears throat> is, is that we voted on the initial plan for the facility. Mm -hmm. the, the f and it's, I mean, obviously budget, you know, we, we obviously have a budget too, but I think the greatest concern other than money right now is the footprint. Um, and the footprint, <clears throat> what was, if you take the dimensions that was on, what, what was voted on, it's about 1,700 square feet. That was the, that was the plan. Um, and then back in 2016, I think, is when we first started this, um, we, had the, we had the three options, the A, B, and C options, which, um, you know, C being the lowest option at uh, 4,200 square feet. Uh, with a cost somewhere around 90,000 um, to as high as option A, which was 5,800 square feet at 116,000. Um, of course, these funds at that point were based upon, you had $30,000 that were currently available to the rec committee in the fund. There was the 40,000 that you talked about that was right. granted by the taxpayers. There was another $25,000, which was part of the Tony Hawk grant, where you only got five of the 20. Right. Um, and then there was the, the fundraiser. So if right. you take the Tony Hawk that money that out of it, if you take, if you, what's that? The Love Back grant. We got the Love Back grant. Okay. How much was that? Um, I think a thousand. Thousand. So, so if you take the, if you take the differences out, you're looking at a proposed budget of around $80,000 based on what was looked at prior. The concern that I have, um, especially after it's been brought to my attention with the other things that people want to see at the facility, is that is that the the footprint has gone from 1,700 square feet, and probably 1,700 square feet really wasn't enough square footage to really actually have something constructible, and I understand that. And then it went from 4,200 square feet to to 5,800 square feet to 7,200 square feet now, you know? And it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't think that the intent was to have a, I think the intent was to have a park that everybody could enjoy and would be one of several amenities of the rec facility, not necessarily just be a park that people from around are gonna come and skate there. Um, so it's, I, I think right now, the way I see it is, even if Tony, him, Tony Hawk himself walked in the door tonight and said, here's half a million dollars, go build a nice park in Bethel. I don't think the taxpayers of Bethel want to see a 10,000 square foot facility sitting there. That's where I'm at, or that's, that's the questions I've been fielding and the concerns is, but at the same time, we're kind of, we, we want progress. You know, we want to see something built. So there's a combination of the budget constraints, which which, you know, based on the comparisons that we had here was around $80,000, plus or minus whatever you get on top of that. But it's staying inside kind of that, a footprint that is reasonable over there that's gonna keep green space. Um, so, and I guess that's kind of where our question is to you guys is, 
you know, it sounds like the project's getting really big, and we're a little concerned on that, not just on the budget end of things, on just the other stuff. Um, well, part of what we wanted to do was shoot for the moon and come up with a footprint that we thought was absolutely amazing and have you guys make us make it smaller. So we came up with about 9,600 square feet. It was 120 feet by 80 feet. Mm -hmm. And um, that's not gonna fit in the space exactly. We'd have to knock off a corner for the uh, swing set and stuff. But w we wanted to shoot for the moon and then be whittled down as needed. Um, so go ahead and talk shop with us and let us know, you know a ceiling number that the town might be comfortable with. I mean, I, I will just throw my two cents and then the board, you know, will throw theirs as well. I know Mo will. Um, but I mean, just kind of looking at the different proposals that have come in over the time um, and seeing where we started at and where we're at now, it, it seems like a facility over there somewhere in the four to 5,000 square foot would be reasonably adequate for keeping green space and and the other amenities there. Now, I don't know what you can build in four to 5,000 square feet, but it, but even if it's four or 5,000 square feet, that's three times what the taxpayers had saw it being, you know? It might be half of what we're thinking the moon is, but it, it's considerably larger than, than the beginning footprint. I mean, that's kind of my, obviously we want to come in in budget, so in budget would be so based on your in-budget, you have $70,000 worth of funds available to you. Yeah. Now, whatever Tony Hawk gave you and whatever your fundraiser was and whatever um, the other grant was, that, that would be your budget to build on. Right. Um, if, if I see the numbers correctly. Yeah, um, and, and we want to, there's a land water cons conservation fund that we had, had um, um, found out about last year, and uh, the pre-application pre is um, is um, coming out in August, and we would like to um, um, apply for that. And Greg said that he would help us with that, um, and um, and basically it's it's it would it would be a matching thing. So our seventy thousand. Hopefully we would get seventy thousand from that from them, and then we could build the park. I know when you were talking with Parker, that was the, the initial person yes, that was Michael building it. Parker. Like around a five thousand square foot, which was kind of like Plan B, it was the middle plan. Um, that was somewhere around a hundred thousand dollars budget, is what. Yeah, you know, it was you know, granted that. whatever yeah, amenities you have inside the skate park will probably yeah. be, you know, make your budget thousand. more or less. But that was kind of what we were looking at before. Um, of I think the longer we wait, the more expensive yeah. materials become. Mm -hmm. um, we had talked at our last rec committee meeting um, that Greg was at about, you know, I'm, I'm the pool director, so I'm there every day now. I, I watch the kids, I see where they play. Um, you know, my kids grew up at the pool. They, grew up doing the water slide in the summer and sledding there in the winter. It's, I mean, really the only hill in Bethel. Um, it, but it's a fun hill in the winter. Um, and so we, we were throwing around, we've been throwing around the idea of, okay, where could we save a lot of money, perhaps? And, and the thought was, if we move, if we could understanding that the master plan had been voted on by the um, townspeople and respecting that process. But is there anything that says that we can't tweak, you know, where the things maybe are? So just, it's, I'm a very visual person, so I'm sorry. But we were talking, you know, is there any chance that we can move that skate park even further down the hill and more, you know, in this area here, or even down here, moving the transport carts a little bit and moving the skate park there. One, it would save a lot of money because we wouldn't have to build a retaining wall, per se. Two, it would secure that hill, which is really the play place of children um, during the day. They love to play in this whole area where 
the, gym, the existing jungle gym is and that hill. So if we even turn that skate park and jutted it down this way or moved it down there, is that feasible without having to take it back to the townspeople and, and asking for their permission to, to move the skate park a little bit? I, I think looking at your layouts, based on the, well, I'm just saying, based on the, the latest skate park diagram that you had at 7,200 square feet for the skate park, I mean, wherever you put that skate park, you're gonna run out of green space to, if you want to preserve the hill, you know what I mean? Um, you're gonna have to do something, at that point, you're gonna have to do something. Either you're gonna have to do one tennis court rather than two, or you know, something's gonna have to give. Um, to do that, I mean, I, I personally, the, the actual layout of where you want to put the pieces on the land, I, I really don't have a huge concern on that personally. I think it's just conserving the square footage of green space that people want to be able to use, right. and not just, you know, people want to be able to go out there and have the access to grass rather than just concrete, concrete pavement, you know. Right. Uh, and I think that's the concern. I mean, if you move the skate park, I don't know, onto the upper corner, I don't think would be a deal breaker. I think it's just kind of... Well, I think then it gets into the abutting neighbors. For Good. the farmer, I would push it. Yeah, way. so it, it then, so this is a site plan. This is an approved site plan. If we're talking zoning talk here and and uh, changing the... I've already I looked into this, like I told you I would. And it would require a, a site plan amendment, which means... So what has happened is you're taking... They gave you three options with all the same elements, just in different positions. Mm -hmm. So because this was voted on with these elements in the, in the location that they're at, the, the general location is set, but if you move something substantially like to a whole different area, it changes the whole dynamic of the, of the site plan. So then it has to go into a site plan amendment, which means a new map, which is not a big deal, but the big part is it's another public meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a public process. The entire site plan process is a public process. DRB. Uh, it would have to go to the DRB, and then it would be a public hearing on the site plan. So uh, I was hoping that we could, if it was inconsequential, if it was minor enough to move it, it wouldn't require it. We could just do it in-house. But everything I've read so far, and I haven't been able to find a, another way to do it, says that it has to go to a site plan amendment because it's a substantial change to the plan. So there is that piece also. How long? I know we talked about this, but I honestly don't remember. How long would that process take? Uh, I'm against that process because it just opens a can of worms. I'd rather shrink the skateboard park to fit the footprint that we have. Yeah. If the, to go back to your question, the process, so we go to the DRB, so we'd have to schedule a hearing with the DRB. Um, and in the meantime, we would warn that. So we're talking probably the entire process is probably two months. Depending on how, what sort of. You probably have to have two public meetings because it's a major. Right. You know, it's a site plan amendment, so it's a minor subdivision. It's a minor. It's a. It's a minor. It's a minor, it's a minor change. change. Have a hearing. So, so I, again, I'm just kind of shooting a little bit off the hip here, but and our I typical. I don't want to lose the Tommy Hawk money just because we're stretching this out and, and taking up our time. We have a time frame for some of this stuff. And, and that's another thing. Ellie, when, it, when does that have to be done? The, the I, I Tony Hawk two, two years. Two years. So the, so the process is probably going to take anywhere from two to three months, depending upon what sort of feedback we get from the public. That always throws a wrench uh, into it. You're going to, I mean, a lot of comments that I have heard are, how come we're doing skate park? You know, I mean, it's back to that discussion because of the time lapse that has, that has happened. And going to the DRB and having the hearing and whatnot, probably open up that, yes. that can of worms. Yes, yes it would open up a can sure. of worms. It would open up a can I think just the toughest thing is being that, I mean, it, it looks spacious on the diagram we have there, but we also have to remember that that diagram shows 1,700 square feet of skate park. Now, you know, even based on what was proposed to us two years ago here, yeah. you know, that skate park had two and a half times the size of it already, you know, and it's, you know, it went from this to that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even if you get moving pieces around, if you move it up by the tennis courts, even if you could do it, well, the tennis courts are gonna go somewhere, right? And I don't think there's enough room to fit everything now, because then, then the tennis courts would be fighting with the 
the hill in the bank and you know I don't uh, you know how that works so I mean I guess I guess our thing is or uh, my personal opinion is it's the rec committee's um, design process of you know as long as we stay within the the, the, the footpath of what we had presented to us and it just seems like each time it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and even if we had the money or the money was given to us, I don't think necessarily that we're, right. we're ready to move forward with a uh, $200,000, 10,000 square foot skate park. You know, I think we'd be really happy to see a $15,000 basketball court that we could turn into a skating rink. I mean, I really do. I mean, that's just like really things that could be done really fast. I mean, I can tell you every kid that I see come down by the pool or between the pool and the school or dribbling a basketball, every single one of them. I mean, there's a lot of them. And I, I don't, I think the skate park's a great idea. I just, I think the more time we invest on designing this, it's getting bigger. And then all we're gonna end up doing is saying, you gotta cut that thing in half and you're gonna have to redesign it back down. So. Uh, That's what I'm trying to do at the local level before we get the West Coast guy involved. Uh, his square foot cost estimate for us it's forty-one dollars a square foot for reference. So that's about more it than takes twice. Very what little time. To that's get almost it. twice what was presented to us. Yes. You know, yeah. which I guess is okay if you're if you're absorbing that with grants. Uh, that you know, I, I'm sure that's fine as long as we keep that, that. That was one of the reasons our local skaters had an issue with the other guy who's potentially going to be designing the park. They had some workmanship issues. That, like no, that you can't have a park with this and this and this kind of defect, and that was what led um, Corey to look look elsewhere. Um, would it be an issue if we did a little bit of an L just around the near corner of the tennis court? Would that be within maybe the spirit of the design, or I'd have to look. I could do my best to, to say yes. You know, because if because if we really need to to skate up that. For a little bit of flow, it, it, it makes it a little more. I, I would say my gut says, yeah. I think it's within the spirits in the general location that was presented to the, the voters, but I'd have to verify that. Sure. But, but right now, I, I would say most likely that would could probably, as long as the board. And that is gets okay us away from the yeah. more steep terrain that right. seems to be up right. um, I mean, I'm just I'm doing quick math. I mean, you're looking at what was presented to us. Um, Prior, the 7,200 square foot, I mean, at $41 a square foot, you're at almost $300,000 for a skate park. Yeah. Um, and even, even if you look at the uh, square footage that were presented to us um, through when Parker was designing it, the initial ones, I'll call them, um, you know, that were between 4,200 and 5,800 square feet, I mean, you're, that's a, you know, that's a $170,000 to $225,000 skate park. And I, you know, you know, I think we're looking at that's probably twice the size of what it should be, um, both budget and, you know. Well, we've also got the concept that was approved by the voters. Yeah. And if you drastically, if we're going to triple the size of that, they're over keeping in the spirit of what they and, envisioned. And just a note on that, uh, that proposed budget option comparison where it's got the, the total cost and the cost per square foot. There's a piece in there that's not shown. It's the in kind from the town. There's a twenty-five thousand dollar deduction of the town doing the work with volunteers and themselves. So that number is a little bit deflated, um, we, we if you will. We have large list of items which can be in kind. Right. I, I, but just just trying to make the budget make a little more sense. That, that there's still there's a there's a, a significant amount that are that's not shown there. That would be the actual construction cost. Otherwise. When, when we spoke with Vince um, a couple months ago, he said we've got um, 41 as like a baseline square foot cost for people who don't want to look at all the, all the line items. And then he said as you can whittle down the in kind and get a lot of benefit from local folks, uh, you can get down to like around 30 bucks a square foot. But if there's no in kind, you probably ought to inflate the number to 50 bucks a square foot. Right. 
So I, right. I have a, do you each want a copy or? Uh, sure. That's the list um, to be willed. The second page shows a few different um, square foot footprint uh, and the uh, related uh, square foot cost. You'll be the total project class. Yeah. Anybody else? I mean, I would. I still can't. I still can't hear So even with these the forty eight hundred square foot, that uh, cost at three hundred forty thousand, yep. considerably mm -hmm. higher. Mm -hmm. yeah, it sounds like we didn't have super meaningful square foot costs for a, a quality park initially. We've since refined that. But we're going to sharpen our pencil as best we can. I mean, I would, uh, I, I guess my opinion, talking with board members, is is that the budget, the budget that has been presented and approved by the taxpayers through um, through the rec committee funds over the years has been 70000 is what they have appropriated. 70000 70000 Plus there's Tony Hawk grant and there's other. Right fundraisers and grants that you've done and maybe right. there's um, you know a matching grant or something that right. can offset some of that right. so I think you know I think they really get a look at 70,000 as 70,000 plus whatever you can bring in as their budget right and I mean I I mean based on this I really just looking at the green space and stuff I mean I think you're really gonna be looking in that 4,000 square foot area I mean it might not be the part that everybody you know, from other towns around wants, but it, you know, I just, if we get too bigger, I think we're just going to have, well, one, I think it's just going to take us longer to get the thing designed and built. Mm -hmm. And again, I, you know, the longer it stays out there, the less momentum it's, you know, you're losing momentum with momentum people in the, and there's, so, I mean, I don't, so I guess budget-wise, it's really kind of hard for us to tell you exactly what your budget is. I can tell you at the, at the town level, the budget, from what I see, is 70000 Now, whatever else you guys have for matching grants or, or donations would be on top of the seventy. But we really also, I would say if we go over 4,000 square feet, that we probably ought to be representing it to the voters to say, do you want to go to a 7,200 square foot place, you know? It wouldn't be fair for them to, you know, they chose the model that shows 1,700 square foot, you know, and right now we're five times that size. Um, well, even the jump to 4,000. No, it's twice, you know, more than twice. Yeah. Is, is 5,000 out of the realm? Look, look, at a, look at a footprint for a medium sized house. I mean, that, we're, we're talking about that. Yeah, can I ask any questions you want? The, uh, the park you were talking about at 11, I think I know where it is. How many square feet is that? So I can so get in my mind what is done in a certain size. Sure. That would be. I would say that one down there is in the 5,000 square foot area. I want to say it's not as huge one. It, no, it's, it's a big it's one. I want to say it's big. You think it's bigger than that? It's big. It's very square. It's they just redid it. Right? They just redid it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know the, the biggest kickback that you're going to have from the voters right now is green space yeah. and, and preserving green space down there. Well, in all fairness, too, I mean, uh, I don't see square footage. And so, and I don't even remember voting on this, honestly. But, to me, I, you know, you see that drawing and you think, oh, wow, yeah, I mean, we've got all this green space, even if we put all these beautiful things on right. that piece of property. In all fairness, 
that's not a, in a scale drawing in terms of what I need to see in order to say, oh yeah, that all would fit there. That makes perfect sense. It's not until I'm over there walking it and, you know, when we were over there with Greg last week walking it and saying, okay, this is pacing it out. This would be this size. This would be this size. You could actually, if, if we did tweak it, move it just a little bit, you would save that hill. And I think if people understood that by moving it just a little bit it would save that hill that everyone loves so much, I don't think people would object to, to, to moving it just a little bit. I mean, Greg paced out various I mean, based on what, what is current, well, I don't know if it's got to be very sensitive, but based on the most current dimensions that we had, the 7,200 square feet, I mean, this was 17, the 7,200 is, is this. So you lose, you lose all the screen spaces around the part there, you know, so you're going to, you know, from what I saw in the drive, mm -hmm. it comes out like this. Yeah, that's so too so you lose you lose the green spaces here in the hill. Yeah. You know, so at some point something has to be done. Right. This has to change. Now this is a you know, this is drawn to scale. Right. Um, with what we have over there. But it's so, so hard to see. Because it still looks like there's so much green space. Right. But I think that's the fear is no matter what the no matter what the price is or or how much you know, even if you had a huge in-kind donation, mm -hmm. is, you know, going from something that has, you know, a lot of green space to something that's like, fit right in there to the maximum. And um, I think that's the challenge. I mean, I, I just... But Greg, <coughs> if we go from 17 to, I don't know, 48, 5,000, whatever, does that trigger an amendment to the... I'll have to, I don't know. I don't know yet. I'll have to look at the code and we'll have to look at how the language is written. So 5,000 um, square feet, is that what you're saying? I'll well, just pick, I mean, a, we're just, pick yeah. a number. You know, if we're going to make a jump that triples the size of, uh, almost triples the size of what the code is through, so we need to go right. back to permitting issues. And maybe that's, the that's the thing I think about. You're taking, you know, originally it was a certain size and now it's, Three times that size, or two and a half times that size. Um, which, which I mean, if you we, we as a group, group which right now, even if you built say the seven thousand square foot one over there, right, it's going to look like you have a lot of green space left. But once you start building the others that you haven't talked about yet, the tennis courts, you know, the skating rink, and that, then all of a sudden you're going to have like a a complex there where not, you know there's not going to be any room to do anything else other than play tennis, skate, go swimming. You know there will be like you know kids play or, or you know sliding in the winter or you know you're going to run into all those issues. I wonder if because this has been kind of a long process, it might be and it because it has been kind of a lengthy process and it's probably one that's going to continue on a little bit longer. I mean I really can't see this you know coming this year. Um, you know, another thing maybe to consider just so that it looks like things are progressing over there is, is maybe start thinking on the other project, you know, something simple like if you could put together that, that oh. winter skate area, I mean, that's something that probably doesn't cost a lot of money and yeah. it's something you can show the taxpayers, it looks like more is being done, you know. Well, we are doing, uh, we are doing another project in the process. We're doing the hiking and, and, and trails. So we are, we are um, working on another project at the same time to um, show the, so the, so we have hiking and biking trails that are connecting the school to the rec center. Mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're doing that in the process of working on it. Well, I, I guess, Yes, you're right. And so I think what I was talking about was like the, the yeah. approved plan right. footprint of the facility. So we are working. And that was hiking <clears throat> and hiking trails was part of the master plan originally too. Mm -hmm. That was part of the right. survey. So we are working on that. Um, and we were working with the school. We're working with um, 
We, uh, we worked with Dennis Wood and Carol Ketchum to get easements to be able to do that part. And that, that was um, also part of the community survey and that people wanted hiking trips. So we're working on that part too. So what are we thinking board-wise? Um, <clears throat> size slash budget, um, something that they can go back on and I mean, I just would hate to waste any extra time that we need to. Right. Um, <clears throat> and, and I want, I've been wanting to get this done two years ago, but, um, and just so you know, the, the, the Land Water Conservancy <clears throat> Fund, the pre-application is in August. Um, we would be rewarded, if we, if we get the money, it would be rewarded to us in June of 2019. So that, so my thought process is, okay, um, then we can build the skate park in end of August of 2019. Mm -hmm. Real quick, I may stop a little area here. This is 1,700 square feet from that corner back there to about where I am. Just just for a visual frame of reference. Um, yeah. How much that helps you or not? But uh, yeah. it actually helps me. Um, and we're I mean we're currently talking, well, the board is currently talking, you know, for four to five thousand square feet, which would be three times. you know, two and a half times that, which you know that's but even that that's considerable space, right? Yeah. And, and right now where the rec committee stands, you know, you're looking at seventy two hundred plus. So that I mean that's a that's a big that's a lot of real estate over there. So Yeah, and really, I mean, I want to respect all the work that Shane and these yeah. young kids and guys have done. You know, I don't really think that Vince really captured what we wanted when he came and met with us that night. And Shane very uh, generously said, Well, I'll join the committee, we can work on this. Mm -hmm. So, to respect all the work he's done, you know, I would love to see it a little bit bigger than the original footprint, but now that I'm over there working every day and I see where the kids play and I see, you know, how much space we use for our family fun nights and stuff, I don't want it ginormous. Yeah. Um, and I really would like to get it built because <clears throat> I would like to get the kids off the street who are skate parking on the streets on Saturday and Sunday mornings really early and in the evenings. And I would like to get them off the street and get more teenagers and kids over at the pool. So, so, so we all, I think, are in agreement. We really want to get this moving and get this done. Right. So what do you think about doing like, um, you know, keep it, keep it around 4,000 square feet, which is more than twice the original size, so it's more than twice than than what was just paced off here, and you know their budget is seventy thousand plus plus any. Well, if you if you said three thousand square feet and that's forty dollars a square foot, that's what they're talking about. Oh well, they right. That's one hundred twenty thousand. Well, they might have to adjust their square their square footage based on their budget. You know, combination of budget and square footage. I don't think. <clears throat> I think we should wait um, just a little while to make sure that we can do this and see not, if not get into a uh, two to six month process before anything can happen. I mean, Greg needs to look at some zoning or whatever codes and say, okay, if you alter it at all, you got to do this, or you can alter it this much, or you can move it this much. I think we need to, I think, yeah, or I can think right. it, I need to know those things. But as far as their planning, I agree. You know, I think 4,000 feet is more than sufficient. But we should probably supply them in some sort of maximum number, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and, and if we can't do it based on permitting, then they'll have to follow the constraints yeah. of the permits. What's that? Can we tentatively say that 5K is the ceiling? Like, just so, like, we know we're not building anything bigger than that. That, that helps us whittle down our dreams a little bit so that we're not 
building a giant it parking lot. It sounds like they were important. At, at a certain point, your, the taxpayers agreed to 1,700 square feet, and if all of a sudden they see a 4,000, 5,000 square foot, you know, they're going to say, huh, that's not what we agreed to. Yeah. I mean, from the tax we, have to, we have to listen to what the taxpayers have approved. Right. They'll go through the process of changing. I mean, it's a, it's kind of a combination of both too. Yeah. It's not just the square footage, but it's the budget. And obviously, you guys would yeah. have to play with. Right. You know, I mean, even if we granted you five thousand square feet, maybe you can only afford three thousand. I mean, exactly. when you get all done, so there's there's going to be that trade off of well, a, the, acreage versus cost. The income is going to be a little harder to figure too because. We've got a certain amount of summertime for our, for our road crew to do their work, and if they're going to be, I see one figure in here. Spending three, four weeks, weeks doing that. Twelve weeks, I mean, that's three months out of our, our three-month summer. Can't do it. No, we'd have to, if we wouldn't be able to incline that. Mm -hmm. these, these aren't all in-kind items, but the more of them that can be, the lower square foot cost. It, well, yeah, but it still costs the town the money, because we're paying the town to do a job, and if they're not doing one job, that you know. And, oh, you know, I, I understand that, but yeah, and there, and there's more than just town uh, personnel who can operate uh, heavy equipment like that. Um, Our equipment? Town, 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 town. Oh, if it's town equipment. Yeah. Or you can. Yeah. 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 But if, if, we're, if we're paying to rent it from, from an equipment rental place for that period of time. And because we, the, these costs don't include the bedding material either. Bedding material, trucking, or labor supplied by the town. Right. So it's another cost factor. And are, are most of the grants our max incoming? Depends on the grant. Uh, Some are, it depends on the grant. Okay. Uh, not all grants are in kind matches, yeah. but. The, so. one, the one that we want to apply for in August is, it, it is a matching one. For the um, taxpayers to come up with X number of dollars. Well, we have, yeah, it, and yeah, we so have seventy. So if you have seventy, they give 70. you seventy. Yeah, we have the seventy, so we want the grants right. and matches. So. Right, but not all. Yeah, well. Because yeah. otherwise, it's going for the tax. Right. Voters. Right. Or our budget. Right. But you're looking at, I mean, if you did the, you have 70 and you got the grant for 70 more, right. plus plus what you have right. on the books currently, I mean, that puts you around 3,800 square feet based on $41 a square foot cost. Now, that could right. be a little bit higher if we decide that it's not worth the crews to be sitting there for multiple weeks to, to build that. So, I mean, that's 30, I mean, that there is 3,800 square feet. Which that is, you know, just about twice the size of the, the original. That the voters approved. Right. So at that point, they're within, they're within the voters' budget. Budget. But they're outside the scope of the. A, a lot of these numbers also have not been tuned for our size park. This is probably for a, uh, I want to guess, a twenty thousand square foot park. So not everything has been tuned for us. This was some other town's project at some other town's size. It, I mean, it, it's kind of a tricky one because we're we're feeding, you know, I'm fielding questions on it, when people don't see anything going on and they hear a lot of different things, you know, the paranoia, you know, sets in and it's the, oh my God, I can't believe that they're spending $200,000 for skate park. I'm like, well, I haven't heard that. You know, but those are the things that are going around the community or, or the skate park, you know, 10,000 square foot skate park, we can't do that over there. You know, so those are the th things that are going through people's heads right now. Um, and I am so there's kind of like both somebody ends of it. stood up at town meeting and asked about it last year and said, oh, we gave you 40,000 last year. Where is our skate park? So I do understand. Mm -hmm. I think the tough position that we're in as a board is you know, we are here to help direct the management of the town as well as um, fulfill the taxpayers' interests. Um, the taxpayers' interests was stated, well, 
it's a little convoluted because originally the taxpayers had voted for this plan which has 1700 square feet um, 1700 square feet and they gave you thirty thousand dollars to do it with initially but then Corey went and had his member Corey stood up two years ago at town meeting day mm -hmm. and talked about this proposal which is the one we have in front of us was right. the a b and c one right. and it all depended on tony hawk which that was right between 4,200 square feet and 5,800 square feet. But the assumption that was probably gonna be in the 42 to 4,700 based on the budget. And then there, was, there wasn't really a vote. There wasn't a vote like, yeah, let's go bigger. But the taxpayers did vote in the extra funds that year that gave you up to 70. So it's kind of a, you know, in a way to me that the taxpayers are saying we're okay with giving you seventy thousand, and oh by the way, forty-two to forty-seven hundred square feet. That's kind of the way I take it. There was no official vote on that, other than they approved the extra line item. Mm -hmm. So, I guess that's the way I see it. Um, I see forty-two to forty-seven hundred square feet with a budget of seventy thousand. What do you What do you think, Paul? I think that's a lot of art. Like, All right. Closer down to the, I, you know, obviously you can't. You're not going to be able to do what you want to do in 1,700 square feet. Having an effective use by professionals, you know, guys that skate on a regular basis. But I think if you get, you know, over 4,000, it's going to require an amendment of some kind to the mm -hmm. plan. And it's positive. We need to find that out. And that may trigger public meetings and more discussion and things like that. Because if the actual vote, the only real vote that the townspeople voted on was that unit right there. Technically, they voted money. But they have yeah, money. It's tough because they voted for extra money too right. after seeing, and, and this by far is not my opinion. <laughs> But this is the way I see the taxpayers over the two terms is the first time around they did vote on the, on the footpath, you know, the footprint over there. And we didn't really have a budget at that time. You know, we were appropriating money, over, you know. So we voted on a footprint and then, and then two years ago, Corey went before to talk about this is the plan and that's why we need the extra 30 on top of the 10. Right. So it gave you, so then they kind of voted on a budget, yeah. but not necessarily the upgraded footprint. You know, it's so. Yeah, and the year before, they voted on 30,000. Right. Mm -hmm. So. So it's really, it's really tight. I mean, I, yeah. you know. Pretty tight, the, the bigger you make it, you're going to have more complaints about people who want the tennis court, who want the ice skating rink, who want a basketball court. You know, at a certain point, they're going to say, you know, where are we going to put all this? Well, I mean, anything, anything greater than 1,700, you're losing your footprint somewhere else, right? Right, and you, and you don't have the green space that uh, people might want to use. What do you think, Dave? Looking at the picture, I don't... <clears throat> and then looking at 1,700 feet, and in my mind, I thought about seeing skate parks uh, it doesn't all fit. I mean, I, I don't think 1,700 feet is big enough to have a, a I mean, it, it works great for the three to five to 10 year olds maybe, but for the, in the next level, 1,700 feet isn't gonna cut it. Um, but <laughs> where to put it becomes, I mean, I just, I guess I would like to see a, a different size on this picture. Well, they had the, um, well, yeah, it's kind of, where they have it drawn there, I don't know if it's hard to tell, but this is the new, this is the new dimensions of it. Kind of hard I to see. Yeah, but that's like, that's like the current, this was original, this right here. Yeah, and this, this is, the, is current. And that's 7,200 feet? Yeah. So it takes, so you lose all this green space here. Now, on paper, it doesn't seem like a lot, but when you get out there and walk it, that's quite a bit. Oh, yeah, I know. I've been over there. 
But then again, at that 70, that's 72, if you cut that in half at 35, which would be twice what we what they voted on. Um, I have a question. Do we want to let Greg do a little digging on what would be within the realm of reason? And maybe at the conclusion of this meeting, we say our, t our at least tentative ceiling is 47. And we just stop there for tonight as far as physical footprint. I, I don't think we could. I don't know. It seems like Greg would need to do a little digging before we can. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now, and I'm not seeing a speci any specific language that says, I, either way, honestly, nothing that can be interpreted at all. It's a conditional use approval, uh, which requires a site plan. Uh, I assume that we went through that process before. I don't know if maybe that's what was voted on at the town meeting when they said, which one do you like? I don't, I don't know, I, I don't know. I don't know if this plan has ever had site plan approval. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'll have to look at it. My, my guess is anything you build over there, you're gonna have to make amendments to your permit. Well, I don't know if we have a permit. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if Well, if we this, must, we, we did stuff over the rec facility. I hope so. We must, okay. okay, so went through a whole public conditional use permit, it's a whole conditional use um, hearing, and should be all that that you had to have gone through. Well, and that's what generated the site plan to begin with. So I don't see anything in the standards, in the code that specifically says um, there's a, I don't know, a variance or a, a, an area that, you know, you can go larger or smaller or whatever. There's no language like that that talks about the, um, the intent or the spirit of the, the approval. I don't see anything about that. Um, it does talk about when it is required and it says, no permit shall be issued by an administrative officer for site development related to a conditional use until the development review board grants site plan approval. But it doesn't talk about um, an amendment to the site plan. Well, some of this, uh, when we built the, uh, the pool house, maybe, maybe that was all in, in one month when we did it. Um, could have been. I'll have to look at it. I just don't know. I don't. I don't know. You said that. Do you remember when they had all these hearings and all this? When the when did anybody at any time go? That did the DRB and I'll have to check. Did DRB come in with? Because it have to. We should have gone through the development review board. Yeah, I'm not sure. For a conditional use. And um, if it had, then they would have given us their their findings. Yeah. And that would be a that would allow for most likely a conditionally use permit. Um, now they might have gotten away with just doing it a use by right if the zoning allows for it, but it still would have required a site plan approval. And that's the part I need to find out. Mm -hmm. um, the way I'm reading the, our code, a site plan approval is a site plan approval. You have to have one before the other. So um, I think I would have to really speak with the development review board on that question as to what and how much is enough of a change to create essentially a new site plan. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't have an answer, and the code doesn't specifically give me a real answer either. I mean, I would like to, why don't we for, I mean, I, it's good to spend some extra time on this because oh, yeah. we really yeah. need to get the project yeah. moving in a positive direction. Right. Right. Um, you know, and we don't want you to spend any more time than you have to right. um, building, designing, um, to just yeah. have to redesign and all that stuff because right. it costs money. It's a lot of time. Right. Um, why don't we Why don't we find out the questions in regards to the site itself? Yeah, the site plan. And see if uh, there's anything that's going to limit us to yeah. permitting on that site. If we go offside that footprint, what do we have to do, if anything? That'll also give the board members some time to really digest, take take a walk over the air to see what. 4,700 square feet or 4,000 square feet looks like over there. Um, and it'll also give time um, to have our other board member here as well. Um, so our next meeting would be August 13th. Yeah. <clears throat> so we want to put that, I would like to put it back on yeah, I'll, I'll get the agenda for look. the 13th as a follow up. Okay. Uh, I'll get with the DRB and I'll do some research to see what, what the conditions were, what the language was in when they did the original approval of the site plan. Um, they may have just put a condition that, you know, the site plan is what it is. If there are any changes and this has to happen, I don't know. I'll have to look and see what the DRB came back with and uh, look for any minutes from those discussions that were had during those, those processes. 
I, I will add that we were prepared to make dozens and dozens of changes to accommodate footprint changes, cost of changes. So this, this is by no means a curve fall for us. It, it does drop it in half, but that means we just don't have to sweat where the money's going to come from due to those other five sure. square feet. So it, this really does help us with that. But I mean, even like we were talking about, even at, what was it, 38, to get to the budget, you know, you got to look at it in two ways. But to get out of budget, budget-wise, it's saying if you get that matching grant, budget-wise, you're at 3,800 square feet based on the $41 a square foot, which that could even be higher, you know. So, I mean, you may not even, even if we approve to go up, you might not even be able to build that. I mean, you might not have the capital to do that. Um, so. First of all, I will find out the process, first of all. And what uh, what sort of ramifications enlarging or moving has on the entire process? I'll come back to you at the next meeting with that. You know, it'd be really cool if we could do um, maybe if um, if you could go out there, maybe like four grade four grade stakes with some ribbon and kind of put the grade stakes with ribbon out there, kind of what the Propose what the initial 1,700 square feet looks like out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I can't give and you it might not be exactly the exact feet that it should be, but it'd be nice to kind of be able to. And then if we take a look over there, you know, walk over, we can kind of see that. Okay, I'll do a stake in the ground because a great stake with the kids, there. the kids out there and all that, they'll knock it yeah, down. Yeah, well, August 13th is your next meeting. Yeah. So it'll be toward the end of. What night are we thinking of doing this? Like physical walks? We can do it with road homes. I, I think we can we can just do it and you can go out there at your leisure and yeah. take a look at it. Well if you know, give us a or if you let us know when it's ready, when you've done it, we can just I, I'm sure within a day or two I can buzz over it. Because if we do it with a group, then we have to we have to warn the whole meeting and it becomes a bigger thing. But it just gives us an opportunity to go over and kind of visualize. Yeah. That's yeah. how we make it. Visualize that way because you put the solar panels down there to the uh, solar. But large grade states yeah. might be a problem. Well, one yeah. thing I think that would be really helpful is to earmark the spot for the tennis court because that's like a geographic anchor. Yeah. For a lot of what we're trying to do. It tells us how far uphill we're going to push or not. Yeah. But do you want to put something together, and or do you want you want me to mark it, or are you going to go out and mark different areas? Uh, I don't think I quite know where to find a given corner. If I found a corner, I could. You know, oh, yeah. Well, I'm going to guess. To be honest with you, I'm going to I'm going to take that drawing and I'm just going to scale it. I would. Okay. Okay. Well, um, our August second is our next committee yeah. meeting. Yeah. And it's at the pool. We'll be there August 2nd at the pool. Yeah. If any of you want to drop in and and, and we'll have the cone, we can do the cones or whatever. Okay. I'm just marking. Yeah, we can't be there to watch. Right. Oh, that's no, but if you just say, hey, it's yeah. it's all set, we can just buzz yeah. over it. Right. And I'll just mark. Time. So I'm just thinking about, I'll mark this. And if you can make it clear well, enough, I had the latest maybe, I had, had this thing maybe Dave will take a picture of it with his drone. <laughs> Okay. You can fly over and take a picture of it and okay. see the footprint from the well, I have stakes and cones at the Rex. So if you can make so it look good from the air, right. that might help. Yeah. All right. Well, we thank so you for all your hard work I'll over there. I'm yeah. going to mark the tennis courts. Tennis court. and then we'll I'll mark the tennis courts, okay. and then you um, guys can mark your proposed areas. Beside the skateboard park? Sure. Because I read in your minutes of your last select board okay. meeting that you're just, talking about. Uh, I'll mark the next one. Please pull race or whatever, please. Yep. So, um, can can we, the committee, get information and then talk about it at our committee meetings yep. and see if we, what yep. we, um, what we would help them. That's why we didn't approve the fee study. Okay. Yeah. We want you to get feedback from you folks. We were just okay. looking at the, um, because we've been, we, we've been we looking at. We weren't allowed to know about it. No. We, no. we have been, we have been looking at all the fee schedules throughout okay. the whole town from okay. permit fees to, you know, because so many things have been way okay. outdated. But, okay. And pool fees was on that list. Okay. And all we did at that time was showed what our current fees are. Right. And then there was some information given on what our neighbors charge. Oh, okay. I, and then what what 
a potential fee schedule could look like based on the two. But, so, but that will be coming to you at your next meeting oh, for okay. discussion. Okay. But we would like we would like the committee's input on okay. if if we should raise fees, not raise fees, or okay. uh, residential versus non-residential, that kind of stuff. Because oh. we did raise the fees in May of 2013, and that was five years ago. So mm -hmm. maybe it's time to look at it again. Yeah. So I'll bring it to you for your next meeting, and I'll probably be there your next okay. meeting. Uh, so you can have a discussion and, and come back to the board with a record. And, and it's nothing that right now that we're going to be looking to approve really soon because even okay. if we approved it now, it wouldn't go into effect until okay. next July, right? Okay. So right. there's, there's really no hurry at this point to get that approved. I just wanted to, because I read it and then I was yep. like, well, nobody said anything before our meeting, our committee meeting was. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow, that's dark. All right. So we have next on the agenda. It's getting dark in here. <laughs> we can't. We can't afford it. budget cuts. <laughs> budget cuts. <laughs> Time to go home. Well, you've been saying that it's been a while since we had a later one. <laughs> so <laughs> I had, um, you know, just as we've been kind of looking at everything in town. Um, one thing that I. I had brought up to um, um, Greg and Therese uh, a few weeks back uh, was the whole thing on just kind of taking a look at what the town owns currently for property. Um, it's always good to kind of take a look at our inventory and, and go through it and see it, if any, if there are pieces that maybe potentially we could sell. Because anytime we sell a town owned piece of land, that's, that's potential tax revenue uh, for the town. So there's, so Greg has put together a, Greg and Therese put together a, um, a list of our current assets, land-wise. Um, now, as you'll see, a majority of them are, you know, the library, um, churches, um, school, school um, sewage treatment plant. Um, some of them are the buyout, buyout pieces. So there, a majority of the list we couldn't do anything with anyways or wouldn't want to. Um, but the thought is to kind of, for you guys to take a look at those pieces and then I talked to Greg and Therese about maybe coming back to the board with some recommendations on some of the parcels, if any, on, you know, what would make sense to try and sell and, and collect tax revenue on. Well, we got seven acres of both land here, you know. <laughs> Wait, where's, yeah, so almost, some. Almost down the bottom on the first page. So some of them, like, you know, some of these, uh, you know, you can't, there's a few of them we can't do anything with, but, but, you know, the, the thought, we should be probably doing this once a year, every couple of years, kind of looking at our list as we um, take on new responsibilities of going through it. Because um, if we hold on to it, other than if we use it for ourselves, we don't collect any revenue on it. So, did you, did you or Therese have a chance to look at that list and come up with any recommendations she was this time? She okay. hasn't been there. She's on vacation till tomorrow. So I guess it was a kind of. Would like to continue this on to the next, next uh, meeting. Can we um, break the? Can we sh shrink the list to take out the ones that we know we can't touch? Don't you know? Mm -hmm. Can't do anything with. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and then I've got, um, I can go to each site that, that, that's left over and uh, take pictures or whatever and, and just kind of give a, a quick synopsis. I don't think it's going to be that many. No. When you take out the cemeteries, the schools, and the buildings. And, and, the, <coughs> and the FEMA buyouts. And those FEMA things. buyouts, there's not going to be many pieces left. Right. No, and, and, and that's the whole thought is there might only be one piece. There might be three pieces, but it just gives us the ability, you know, if we know that we have an acre sitting somewhere that we could sell to a developer to build whatever on and collect tax revenue, you know, that might be worth yeah. pursuing. Worth looking at. Um, you know, we get pieces from tax, you know, sales and things like that, so. Mm -hmm. So you think by the 13th, you and Therese could put together a, or condense this list down to the, the actual possibilities, um, and then maybe just, some of these, most of them you can, you know where they're at, but some of them are a little challenging to understand that piece of land is. Mm -hmm. I think um, we can do that. Maybe just uh, 
a little comment next to it on what would be the benefits <coughs> of selling that. Old road by the river. <laughs> Municipal building. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and we'll just keep that conversation uh, continued with that. And we have dog warrant. You're the dog warrant officer tonight? I guess so. I guess I am. Uh, I think this is just a formality. Yeah. Uh, just an annual uh, certification, if you will, I think, of, of how we have handled dogs and wolf hybrids. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's also a report that goes along with it that outlines um, the animals that were taken into custody, I believe, and, and what kind of the date and, and the, where they were taken. I don't think you have to approve it. It's, it's no, I don't think it's anything. You just have to sign it. Well, we've got off a big list of dogs with them and their dog licenses paid, haven't we? Yeah. 59. Well, what do we do about that? I don't know what we've done with that in the past. Um, I don't know if it's something that we want Mark to, you know, look at and, and go to these people's property. What do we get for a, a late fee? Two dollars more? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's labor intensive what he's got to do. I mean, so they just get away with it. So what's the sense of anybody paying a dog tax? Yeah. I had somebody visit my house a few years ago when I had a license with my dog one time. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it had slipped my mind. I wasn't yeah. But it might I be. wasn't happy to have him come to my house. It was I can take your dog. Um, what? What for? I'm not who, but what position was it? Uh, it was the dog officer. Who was it a few years ago? Um, Wendell. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's a long time ago. The one in between. Uh, Interim. Is it done? What was it before? Anyway, Tim was back. Yeah. Jim. Jim, Jim Bennett was it? No, I think it, it was when. Is Wendell? Do I have his name? A long time ago, yeah. A long, long time ago, yeah. Time. Oh. He hasn't done it in a while, but Ten years ago. Oh, I, I was unthrilled to have him come to my property, sure. but it's an attention getter for yeah. sure. I mean, the only way we're going to be able to enforce some, well, the yeah. only way you're really going to get people to make sure that they license their dogs is to make the, you know, the penalty stricter. Oh. I mean, if right now, if you say it costs you, whatever, $8 to register it, but $10 if you're late, I mean, you know, you know, most people will probably do the, you know, and do it right, but there's a lot of people that's like, well, you know, it's only two They are more. set by the state. No, oh, yeah. lovely. Dog licenses, fees are set by the state, I believe. Yeah. She's got an ass. <laughs> yeah. How many dogs do you want to seize, though? I guess that's what this is. Oh, well, yeah. 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 The, uh, the fee that you want to get Oh, it costs us more money to... Oh, yeah. I'll come get your dog, and I'll put it in jail, and you will pay to get it out. Well, we've, we've had to do be, that. That will not be $2. No, That'll be like $100 or more. Yeah. Well, we had, we had the one at the board there a few meetings ago that had, remember the dog that we seized from the hot building? Oh, yeah. yeah. And that was costly. Um, however, if the person, let's say the person decide not to retrieve their dog, that's very costly to the town. Well, so. yeah. But I mean, even if you had to count a five percent dollar notice, say, you know, that, that, that's still, you know. It's not worth the stamp. No, it's not for $2. Yeah. <laughs> it's not worth putting that out in the mail. Is that something we can change the ordinance where we can charge more or not? Uh, well, according to the fee schedule, and unless I'm reading this wrong, it looks as though that those fees are set by the state. So if, we, if they're set by the state, unless, yeah, they're they're under say, the statute. unless they say at a minimum, then we're, we're held to them. Um, but we can definitely take a look at that. I'll, I'll, I'll get with Therese tomorrow and we can look at the statute real quick and see if there's any, any leeway in there. To, but I mean, we can all say, I'm not going to pay it. No, I, I know, yeah, I get it. Yeah. Which is a lot of room for us because 
I mean, I think it's more of a, a civil legal issue. If if your not dog is not licensed and it bites somebody, I don't know if there's a if there's anything there. I mean, I know if they don't have the rabies shots and all that. Well, that's that's, that's a big but, thing. You know, because people have to keep their rabies shots up there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we could check into it if you want to look at possibly the revised. Well, I think in the in the old days, the the reason behind registering your dog was because of the rabies issues that they used to have. Historically, and it, and it, and it historically was, a, it was for damage, dog damage. So they could, somebody kills my chicken, I go to the town, they, they pay for my chicken that somebody's dog killed. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was the historical reasoning behind it. Hmm. Okay, well I can, I can take a look at it and see if it's something that we're giving any leverage to change. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes it'll say at a minimum. Yeah. And we can go from there. All right. Well, we'll move on to the. So, I just need. So, are you signing or are you putting on? We're just signing. signing. We're not. Signing. Okay. Signing. Okay. Signing. okay. All right. Yeah. Greg, why don't you talk to us about yeah. the yeah. municipal planning grant? Sure. So, um, the planning commission has been working diligently on um, a grant. Uh, it's a oh, excuse me, the municipal planning grant. Uh, I don't know if you remember, but a few weeks ago or maybe a month ago, I asked for ideas for this planning grant, and uh, lo and behold, the planning commission was already working on an application. Mm -hmm. So another reason why we're we've just adopted a grant management policy, <laughs> but. Uh, it's a good grant. It's a good grant. So what they're applying for, they've been working with Two Rivers on this. Uh, actually, Two Rivers wrote the grant for them, the majority of it, um, and it's for an update to the town plan. So uh, there have been quite a few changes in the town um, in the last. I think it was written five or six years ago. It's when it was finished. So they're proposing a, 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 a revised town plan based on uh, some of the new information that and kind of new ideas in town and how things are moving. Um, so they're asking for your signature in this. Um, it's, I believe it's a, an 80-20 grant. I don't remember if it's an 20 or 1090, but they have a budget, so the funds for the, the matching would come out of the, the Planning Commission's budget for this. Um, but yeah, so this will allow us to uh, work on a new town plan with uh, Two Rivers and, uh, and the Planning Commission. Okay. So, uh, five years it usually does. Right, and I think it was. It's been five or six years since the last one was done. I I um, so I mean, I had a couple ideas myself for a planning grant, but I think you know they they were ahead of me on the game here, and I think this is a great use for it. I really do, um, and we'll we'll hopefully move forward with this. Do you need a motion on this or just signature? Um, or you probably don't need anything. You do, I need a motion for you to allow me to sign it. Okay. Basically. Second. All in favor? Aye. Ayes have it. Thank you. It's a legislative body. But I think if we. Yeah. I think we're in the clear. <laughs> Ooh. I get that thing back. We, um, approval of the select board minutes from July 9th. This could be five times in a row. Break the street. Paul? Uh, oh. 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 <laughs> So you got a street going. Okay. I'm asking for a clarification. <coughs> okay. Um, item on page three. Um, item three. It says end of budget status report from Katie. It says what? It says end of budget status reports from Katie. I'm oh. wondering if it should say end of year. And, and my own edit is it should say select board minutes, not select board agenda. So I will fix that too. And I think the reason why she had from Katie in there is because that's the way it was in the agenda. Yeah, yeah. you know, I know it was from Katie, yeah. but I just know I'm wondering if it should say end of year. 
a status reports period. Yeah, because okay. at the end of the year. Just take it out. Yep. Right. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Oh, going back down to one. <laughs> no, it's wrote this four. four. We'll go the other way. <coughs> Negative. <laughs> any, any other comments in regards to the meeting minutes? Okay, second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Nope, let's wait. Broke the streak. All right. Other communications, uh, as you saw in there, it's like Greg had approved the uh, stage race. Yep. That usually happens every year. Yep. And just an FYI, if anybody's interested, there is a, a pamphlet in here and some information on the race. If anybody wants to wants to run in the race, it's. Uh, Looks like it's August 17th is a 5K run and walk events, and then August 18th is a motorcycle ride. Yep. Um, that's, that's not the stage race, that's no, this, a mile ride. So which one are you doing? Two separate. Well, the uh, first sorry. one is uh, Green Mountain Stage Race. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. The which one is, is info only. Yeah, yep. sorry. And the second one is the last mile yep. ride. Yep, my mistake, sorry. So we're all good with those. Greg, did you have anything? Uh, I didn't see you on the list. No, I, I, because we talked last time, and I was going to do just, I'll do my report the first meeting of the month because they get a little competitive. Mm -hmm. competitive, repetitive. Um, otherwise, so just a quick, I, I, things that are kind of going on, we've uh, been doing some roadside mowing. We end up getting a roadside mower from Barnard. Uh, we borrowed that from them for two weeks. We're hoping for three weeks so that we can do a little extending of the, the roadside. So, um, AJ's been out doing that, and in turn, we've been, uh, you'll see the guys probably hauling dirt all week this week. They're for Barnard, we're working, uh, we're, we're, our guys are working for them, and we're using their mower. Nice. So it's been a nice little trade off here. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll see some roadside mowing going on. Um, you guys will be grading. They're gonna be, the grader was out for, a, was down for a little while last week, but it's out again. We'll be going. A little moisture is good. A, little, a lot of moisture is bad, but a little moisture is great. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping we get a nice balance here, so we can get the roads all graded out and packed in. But uh, you should see that out and about again. It'll be out all week. It'll be out all summer. Um, other than that, we're just kind of kind of doing our thing. Um, Greg, can you can you talk a little bit about? Um, I can. I'm not completely sure how that's going to work yet, but um, what we've done is, I don't know if you remember, but the, the clerk position after we did our analysis, our, our job analysis for the clerk position, we found that it really, the, the tasks that were in that job description really only quantified to about 15 hours a week. So she was going to lose roughly 20 hours a week and benefits and everything else. Um, and she came up with the idea actually to, um, because she knew that the, the transfer facility was in need of a, a bookkeeper, um, possibly working out there 20 hours a week. And it sounds as though the, the joint board uh, has given Chet permission to hire her as a bookkeeper out there. So start. Until we get a job description written. Right, T just temporary until a job description is written and then it'll be, be permanent. Um, but that allows her anywhere about 17 to 20 hours a week, which gets her back up into full-time status. Um, and she will then continue to have her benefits and everything. Uh, we'll just be so the sharing. Time, the time will be split. The time will be split accordingly. 50-50 most likely, but you know, it depends. Sometimes she'll be at the town a little longer, sometimes out there. So I, I think a 50-50 split is most reasonable. Um, so yeah, we'll be dropping 50% of the cost to have her as an employee, and that will be picked up by the transfer facility. Uh, we're scheduled to start that, I think, uh, July 30th will be the first day for that. Good. So, yep, hoping that works out. Yeah, worked out good then. How, how does that work with the our benefits, though? Aren't they two different entities? They are a town, they're still, they're they're a town employee. Okay. So based on this interlocal agreement that we have, which don't even get us started on. <laughs> oh, can't wear it there, Dave. It, technically, right now, they are all town of Bethel employees. So they are still, uh, they still are allowed to get all the benefits. They have the same benefit package out there that the town employees have. Yeah. I just didn't. They are not, they are not technically a special entity, a separate entity right now. Yeah. 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 Maybe. 
<laughs> we'll get you up to speed on that one another yeah. time. Yeah, that's another one you got to step in. Yeah. That's another day. <laughs> so, uh, any um, kind of looking through all these uh, minutes, I did see the um, solid waste. Um, Looks like in the solid waste board meeting minutes, Mo, they got uh, Green Mountain Power and yeah. Green Lantern mixed up in there, yeah. so you might want to. Paul, catch that one. Yeah. <laughs> you stealing just, my thunder, Paul? No. <laughs> I was getting one in there. Getting big highlights all over the Because I got confused there for a minute. So, so um, anything else to report from there, or just Mo from solid waste? Or? Actually, that does deal with Green Mountain Power. Because they, the original design was for, for a single phase, and they was going to follow the woods down, and they wanted to switch over to a, a uh, three phase. They'd have to bring poles down in between both buildings, which we have a lot Different layout. Of yeah. It would be right in the middle so of actually, the actually, that could be interpreted that way, too. Oh, OK. But they're going back to same things. All right. Any other business to come before the board? Anything the board members at? No? We'll be going to executive session. Okay. Get a second. For more yeah. personal reasons, was it? Uh, legal slash personal. Yeah. Legal slash personal. Yeah. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.